And we're back. Uh, you're listening to KAOP 10, AM 1045. Uh, my name is Danny, and this is Accents on Purpose, a weekly radio show where we cover all the music of Seattle, the Pacific Northwest, and beyond. Normally, at this time, I would ask my co-host Joseph how he's doing, but uh, Joseph got arrested. Uh, the 4th of July is coming up, and we at KAOP Studios usually have a big party where we attach bottle rockets up the whole antenna, and then uh, on the 4th of July, light them off. Joseph was buying these fireworks, and apparently it was illegal, and so he's in the clink this weekend, but he will be out soon. Our lawyers are on it, so anyways. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, that means that you are in the Seattle area. Listen to KAOP 10 AM 1045. Um, check in the meters. It looks like we're about 88 watts of power. Very good. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast version of this, be aware that if you call our 1-800 number, you will not be able to get live on the air. Now, uh, you know, this show is about covering music, and uh, music is fantastic when it's coming through the AM speakers. Uh, it's great during live shows, but one of my favorite parts of music is having a vinyl record in my hand. There's something beautiful about it. It's this crossroads of visual and audio art there's the side a the side b the front cover the back cover possibly a gatefold maybe an inside printed sleeve and right now i'm very excited because there are three people in this studio who love records and they're here to talk about a very special event that's coming up in seattle so would you folks like to introduce yourself um my name is marianne i'm one of the organizers of channel fest um Channel Fest is the first ever all Seattle, all Puget Sound record label fest um, premiering on July 16th at Fred Wildlife. Um, and it's the first of its kind because we are megalomaniacal people, <laughs> um, myself especially, as anyone who's worked with me can attest, who want everything all the time in one room. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to bring together as many uh, local active record labels as we can possibly fit into Fred. And uh, we're going to have a big old party with bands and DJs and uh, workshops and just like a celebration of stuff that's happening. And celebration is kind of a douchey word, but like we're all pretty excited about it. Uh, I don't think it's a douchey word. At I don't all. either. Um, so why don't uh, the other folks uh, in the studio introduce yourself and say how you're connected? My name is V. I also work at Channel Fest. I also uh, I was gonna say I'm work at Channel Fest. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I think yeah, the, I think I mean uh, there's I think like what a total of five people are throwing it on. Is that uh, about like right? Five people in the core team. In the core yeah. team, yeah. yeah. So work for and run are a little bit different. You're. <laughs> I was jesting, of course. So I'm, I'm the director of operations over at Fred okay. Wildlife Refuge, which is the full name of the venue, Fred Wildlife Refuge, and then uh, have become embroiled in this channel fest thing that we're doing, where I am also doing operations e things. So it's kind of a double title. We'll get just roped him in there. Uh, and uh, Chris, will you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Chris Moore, and I'm also part of the channel fest operations. I guess I'm given the title uh, founder and artistic director, which is a lot to handle. But pretty much, I sit back and let everyone do the heavy lifting. And I just say yes or no. I'm just kidding. We just so. we just we're, rotate we just I'm rotate joking. roles based on who we're talking to. Yeah. Uh, that's a very smart thing to do. So now, okay, the gist of this, from what I can understand, it'll be what like 20, 30 labels, like 35. 35 labels. I uh, will be there. Um, and that's of like a lot more that are actually active. Um, but our criteria was pretty tight. Like we wanted to work with labels that were active like in the last year and really like putting on shows, promoting their bands mm -hmm. and also available to come for this event. So yeah, like there's a lot more than 35 and we definitely don't want to say that like, oh, just because the labels that are in the room, those are the labels that matter. Like there's a lot of labels that matter, but mm -hmm. we're just trying to, you know, be curatorial and like show the people that are doing a lot of stuff right now. So now what inspired you folks to do this? I mean, it had to start at some point. So who came up with the initial idea and how did everyone get roped in? So I came up with this idea about I'd say like eight months ago, and it grew into something that I 
we never expect that it has grown into, which is fantastic. I originally just wanted to get a hold of maybe you know two to five record labels and put this event on like every six months or every three months, you name it, and then get a hold of one or two record stores and you rotate them out every time we throw this and have the event at Revolver and you know, like everyone gets a table or a booth. Well, hold, hold on, hold on now. So uh, we, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if you noticed, but the tower that we have on this radio station, it, br- it has 88 watts of power. So this signal is getting out all over the place. So you might have to explain to some of our listeners what Revolver is. Oh, okay. Because we have many, many more listeners than just in Seattle. Of course. Well, so uh, let's, uh, which, I mean, I would say I feel that I know most of you through Revolver. So it would probably be a good idea to explain what Revolver is. Well, Revolver is just a little bar on East Olive Way in Capitol Hill that specializes in playing vinyl. And I guess you could say they pride themselves on being a music community-oriented bar. And that's why I thought, oh, this would be a great thing to do like on a Sunday or a Saturday, for, like six hours. But then after talking to Marianne about it, who originally, you're like, I'm so busy, but I'll talk to you about it. Let's get into it. And then eventually I roped her into being on this project with me and she got stoked about it and we got V and we had Laura and we had Laura, excuse me, and we had Jordan and then it turned into this big conglomerate which is fantastic because now it's not just like a little show where you have eight vendors maybe a couple labels, it's going to be an all-day event we have six plus bands Yeah, and and, and so, okay, sorry to interrupt but no offense, but having four labels and revolver would seem pretty tight <laughs> oh, no, i mean okay. it, it's a perfect size bar but I, I can't imagine you know too many you know people having like tables or booths um so well if, if i could speak to that oh, yeah. um so at revolver where i do the dj booking at revolver yeah. and chris is a bartender over there um we had done some record swap activities yep. over there yep. with a couple people um, and that was kind of the vibe I got when Chris came up with this idea, this initial concept. He was like, oh, I want to ha- incorporate record labels this time, not just, just friends of ours. Yeah. You know, actual labels or, or stores or whatnot. Kind of have them involved. And he was like, oh, let's do that revolver. And I was like, well, let's do that at Fred, actually, because it's a much larger space. And let's kind of expand this. Let's, let's make this a, a big thing. How long has Fred Wildlife Refuge been around? Like two years uh so fred has been open to the public since uh november of 2013 but had been doing underground kind of warehouse parties for a few years uh leading up Mm. to that why don't you describe the space a little bit more oh it's um the fred wildlife refuge is a 5700 square foot art event space right in the middle of Capitol Hill. Okay, so that's what, you know, you put on the blueprints. Yeah. What is it really like? It Come really, on! It's, it's a big, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a place where we do these things. It's, um, well, yeah. Uh, so, so we do uh, art art projects, art yeah. parties, and, uh, and private events mostly, and some public events. But um, kind of our main thing is to, uh, we, we're a community hub for, for yeah. art and, um, and party times, basically. Ooh, I like party times. Yeah. Um, so, some. What are some of the labels that will be at this event? Oh my God, so many. So well, many labels. All, all, all of, all of them. Should we go in tent? Um, order in this, ants? this is okay. kind of like the picnic game. How many can we remember? Which, which are our favorite children? Um, I mean, we usually start with like the big guys, just because everyone's like, oh, which big guys? Guys, are really, like? really? They're guys. They're the all big, guys. The big, I'm sorry, the big people. Come on. Oh, really, oh, guys? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so from what I can remember, okay, light is light in the attic is going to be there, which they are fantastic. Well, see, now we're just going to start with the cassette labels in that in that situation. Okay, yeah. let's do the cassette Ooh. labels. Yeah. There's one cassette label I'm very excited about, which is a uh, Sands Vacation. They've been uh, releasing a lot of bands that are from the Capitol Hill area of Seattle. <laughs> oh wait, is the new SSDD on that? Yep. Okay, sure cool. Yeah. I'm very excited about yeah. that. It, it's fantastic. So they put out Killer Ghost. Uh, SSDD, yep. soon to be Beverly Crusher's second cassette, cool. and many more to follow. And it, I mean, they've just been hitting it hard. There's also this band called Versing. Uh, Versing was on like. the podcast um, three times or so ago. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. very, very nice guys. Very cool band. Uh, but out of some of the smaller labels that are going to be a part of it, that's one label I'm very excited about. Yeah, I would say that I'm really excited about Eider Down. Um, Eider Down, I believe they put out Fungal, Fungal Abyss, 
and a lot of those other like kind of I'm gonna say kraut, kraut rocky stoner jammy like your eyes ble like rolling into the back of your head kind of bands which I really appreciate and enjoy especially Bungle Abyss, we're doing a record release DJ set of Revolver coming up soon, actually. Right. So, okay, yeah. so now, <clears throat> I'm going to say, okay, so you have a lot of fantastic labels that are going to be at this event. What are you doing to get people outside of the, your inner circle to come to this event? Because, I mean, yeah, a lot of things that you said, like, oh, I, I, I know that. So, like, what are you doing to bring people who may not otherwise know about these labels? To we have a raffle. You have a raffle? We have a raffle. Just announcing that, folks. Oh, a scoop? Oh, I yeah. love a good Call scoop. The what is the scoop? Raffle. What is the scoop? Accidents on purpose scoop. I love yeah. an accidents on purpose scoop. What's the raffle? Um, good question. We're still trying to figure that out. Oh, okay. No, we got, we actually, we, we here's, have, a, here's please, a scoop. Here's a scoop. Go for we it. got um, Electro Kitty, who's um, the record uh, recording studio. Well, this I should I should call we'll this the giveaway. For, by the way. I should call this the giveaway, not the raffle, because there's going to be a raffle at the day of the event. But that's that's to come. Um, so Electric Kitty is actually giving away two full days of in studio recording and or mixing time. Oh boy! And we're going. We are running a People's <laughs> Choice voting contest for which of our exhibiting labels gets to get that. Oh, very so. interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So there's a twist. And I've we've had a few scoops. This is the first time we've had a scoop with a twist, which it might be because we have a bartender here. Gary Hughes sound effect for this. <laughs> one. They're, they're having a, a, a scoop with a twist. I don't know what to add to that, but please don't edit that out. <laughs> no, it is a scoop with a twist. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah. basically we have uh, the record label. Uh, some, maybe most, maybe all, I don't know, of the record labels involved in Channel Fest will be contributing swag of some sort to give away in some bumper stickers, keychains, uh, foam hats. Uh, okay, so yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not going to ask you to name names. Did you approach any labels that said no? Yes. Really? That's a bummer. Yeah, well you know Did I'm, they give you a reason? Yeah, there was one label that we were trying to I guess you could say uh, scoop into our Geffen Dreamworks. Oh, Columbia. No, no. Yeah. Columbia. Yeah. Columbia. Interscope. They, they yeah. Pretty much real, real, yeah. real dickheads. They were like, uh, if you can't book Eric Clapton, then we don't want to be a part yeah. of the festival. Like, oh, hey, okay, you know what? Time for my favorite joke. Uh, what's the difference between a baby and a bag of cocaine? If you know the something answer, to say that... Eric Clapton won't let one of them drop or fall or something. I the difference is Eric Clapton would never let a bag of cocaine fall out of a window. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's true, though. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. That's, that's our motto, actually. At yeah. HQ. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so it's really, you, you, you approach the label, and they were just like, <laughs> they're, they're like, what's there the... There a couple. There's still one that's rather big, but, I mean, they're not like Geffen or Interscope by any means. Uh, there is one in particular, which I don't know if I really want to name them. No, that's fine. I, I mean, there's anyways, no reason to get you talking. I'm not going to. I'm not going to name any names. But I was really disappointed they couldn't be a part of it this year because... With the way the line wait, I, I, wait, wait, can I just point out? I really like how you said this year because you're already envisioning, well, it's going to be going on for four decades. Pretty much. Well, <laughs> yeah. Next bumper shoot. Yeah. Except cool. Continue. Yeah, except cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Shoot. No, so it's okay. The story no, 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 no. about this label declining us, they originally declined us right off the bat. Uh, auto just, response auto on response the email. Much. It was like really short, but polite. And, anyways, we. Booked an artist for an after party show, which has not been announced yet. And they're going to be our headliner, and they're on this label. And the label's already sent us mail for like flyering and advertising the show that their big artist yeah. is going to be headlining. So I sent them another follow up email saying, Hey, you know, I'd love to have you guys at the event this year. So and so is playing. Yeah. Um, it just kept dropping hints like, Well, because one of these artists that is one of your main artists you're trying to promote mm. is going to be the headliner of the show, wouldn't it make sense if you were part of the event and kind of showed that you wanted yeah. to be part of uh, the local community, the yeah. music community, which they try to claim that they are. Uh, but, anyways, I got a response saying, We can't do it, unfortunately, because we don't have the staff. That would be there at that time. Oh, they have that fucking the interns. They have interns. I know exactly. Who doesn't have interns? Yeah. We have interns. We have so, interns. Yeah. So, 
that was kind if of... You, you know, if you don't have an intern and you need one, email accentsonpurposepodcast at gmail.com. We will get you an intern. Or info at channelfest.com. We also have some interns for you. We have better interns. Continue with your story. <laughs> anyway, God, it was kind of a, a big disappointment, although they said they'd love to be a part of it next year. But that's just kind of like the Seattle thing. Run into someone you haven't seen in a while. Let's so, hang out. Oh, yeah, let's go grab a beer sometime in the next week. But it's just a friendly gesture. Yeah, so, okay. And that's kind of what they gave us. I mean, so, I mean, I understand what you're saying because, you know, with this podcast, uh, there are some Seattle bands that, you know, I email and I'm like, hey, you want to come on the podcast? And either they don't respond or they give like a weird answer. And I'm like, you know what? I would have felt better if you had just told me to go fuck myself. Like, I'd rather, like, you say, like, you know what? You're stupid. Don't do it. Than, like, give, like, a wishy-washy answer. Yeah. Well, I feel like the only reason why they even showed or expressed some interest uh, the second time I reached out to them for yeah. wanting to attend was the fact that the stranger wrote up two little nice boards. Uh, Dave Seagal. Yeah. Uh, very. Dave Siegel, by the way. Seagal. 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 Not like Steven Seagal, the actor. He may rip your throat out if he heard you say that. Like um, he's good at jogging. I don't know if he's good at ripping out throats. You never know. You never know. I just don't want to say his name wrong. I've just heard stories. Seagull. Yeah, Seagull. Uh, but anyways, yeah, basically the only person at The Stranger that is writing anything that's worth a damn. You, None of you have to say anything about that because I'm well, saying that. I want that. to say things about No, I'm just kidding. I don't want to say anything. Uh, about but no, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, he did a great write-up about you folks. Uh, yeah, it was really sweet. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Full disclosure, he'll be one of our uh, daytime DJs. So Channel Fest, uh, it's cut into two portions, so to speak. 12 to 7 is the daytime portion, the actual label fest. Kids are allowed. It's all ages. All ages. Bring your strollers. Bring, bring, what? It's free. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's free. free. It's free and it's all ages. Br- bring your strollers. Bring, you know, you know bring what? a child who was just born yesterday. Yeah, if, if you're, if, the world of records. if you enjoy well, having your kid out on a leash. Oh, man. Yeah, pregnant so ladies are encouraged yeah. to attend uh, Channel Fest. Uh, yeah. Consult your doctor first, of course. Um, but yeah, we but then, but doom after hours. Don't let it. Kids are yeah. not allowed. Oh, no, 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 no. It's gonna be dirty. We'll be. We'll, oh yeah. my goodness! D- fucking the DJs will p- be playing fucking you know Luther you know fucking. Well, I'm 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 one of the DJs for the after hours, so suffice it to say, it won't be appropriate. Yeah, yeah. no, not at all. And yeah. honestly, when it comes down to like it's a gonna be obscene standpoint. and foreign. Yeah. And foreign. Yeah, things we don't want for our children. Well, there's some things that we haven't posted quite yet on the Facebook event. I mean, twelve dollars for a kilo party—that's a great bargain. So, mm-hmm. how can you turn that down? <laughs> oh Jesus! You heard it here. Just keep your hat on. Badoom. This is news to me, but what a great PR angle. Oh, I, I got some other people involved that wanted to sponsor the event, but they weren't liquor sponsors. We'll just say that. Yeah. This is this is the beauty of grassroots organizing is it, it just happens by the seat of your pants. Um, so this by has been compared sometimes. to some other events in other cities like Barf in San Francisco. Um, Label makes in Portland. There you go. Yeah, Chirp in Chicago. Um, do you look at those folks and be like, oh, this is this is interesting. This is the way we're going to do it. You're like, you know what? Fuck those people. They don't know how to do it. Well, I mean, I think it's safe to say that Seattle's the best, right? Um, otherwise, we wouldn't still be here dealing with shit. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, we're definitely inspired. Um, I've chatted with the good folks at Chirp. Um, chatted with uh, Alan, the guy that puts on the Culture Collide Festival in L.A., um, just kind of done a little bit of research around, you know, how are other people doing it and talking about it. But I mean, we have our own scene here, and the whole point is we do things on our terms in a way that people would react to and respond to. Like, we're not a different city, we're Seattle, we've always done things a little differently. Um, so yeah, like, we're definitely informed by it, and I think the thing that's but like the biggest resounding theme is grassroots volunteer driven. Um, it doesn't really beget what we're doing to be like super commercial for profit about it, which isn't to say we're not professional. We're like pretty professional about how we're doing this. Mostly professional. Pretty professional. Pretty professional. We have email addresses that you I have, have yeah, yeah and yeah, and you have uh, business cards, uh, business cards made out of Ostensibly. wood. Yeah, yeah those. Yeah. The, 
handcrafted. Yeah. Handcrafted, yeah. Yeah, imaginary business cards. Yeah, they're really good if you've seen them. In your well, mind. you gotta feel the texture of it too. Yeah, yeah, that's how you know they're good. Yeah, it's they've been incepted into everybody's mind. <laughs> Um, I hope everyone got that American Psycho reference, by the way. I got it. Yeah, no, <laughs> um, no, I mean, like, we have, like, uh, another one of our members who I think was on your show. Jordan? Uh, Jordan Rundle. Oh, yeah. Like, he's our, you know, uh, visuals art director extraordinaire. Um, he's the reason why we actually have shit that looks good, like a website and a logo and stuff. And Can I get that website address? Channelfest.com. Really? You're not going to do a .org? Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, we so, are professional in case we haven't mentioned already. We have a dot .com. Yeah. We get a uh, so, okay. A let's, really let's, 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 let's. .ca, but no one was up for that. Dot .ca. What is .ca? Canada. Oh. That's, that's for after November. Yeah. You know, we once, we start going, to Canada, once we start going international. Well, um, depending on the, the, how the election goes, we might have to move to Canada. Yeah, you know, no, you know what, actually, you know what, I'm sorry to say this so early, but fuck you. Since 2000, people I've known have been threatening to move to Canada if the wrong person left the election. You know what? I've kept a tally. You know how many people move? Zero. Zero. Yeah. But so, also, moving away, you're just contributing to the problem. I mean, Well, I'm yeah, sorry. You're the one who brought this up. Yeah. You're the one who well, opened well, this door. I did door. it as an adjusting. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that we were being a serious. You know what? God, oh for my the God. record, I moved away when Obama was in office, so I don't know what that's saying. No. <laughs> it says that you're racist, is what it says. Oh, you might be a little bit Did you move to, where'd you move to? Oh. Yeah, not racist. How long were you there? Me. Oh, yeah, he does yeah, that. Yeah, he'll yeah. do that. Um, you're a great engineer. Yeah. <laughs> the engi- You're not a good friend. Don't the, fuck the, with the style, man. Yeah. The, the engineer has uh, got a, a life of its own. Um, I was there for three years. Oh. Ah. Sorry. That's I mean, no, fine. What city? <laughs> I was in Marseille. How was that? Um, it was wild. Marseille's like the Detroit, New Orleans of France. Like, do that. And there's like. But it turned into something very. Would you say it's like the Detroit slash New Orleans? I'm <laughs> glad that you caught that because I was about to say those are two very different cities. Please elaborate. Um, it's a southern port city. It's hot and sticky and uh, has no future or logic. But it's also a former industrial capital, and it's also a former um, sort of, you know, pr- very promising uh, center of the, the the gates to Africa and the colonial uh, holdings of the French government. So, it's it's what I would say a fallen beauty. Wait, have you ever gone to Vichy? No. How are? Th- I was. Do you know anything about that city? Because I think they get a bad rap. Well, I can understand why. I, I mean, I can understand why, too. The Nazis made that the capital. Yeah. It's, and I haven't thought about that until right now. But, yeah, that's got to be weird to be from there. Yeah. Well, v- Vichy is actually like a health resort town. The reason they made it the capital is because the air is really good and there's a lot of natural springs. Um, you can get these, like, Vichy, like, um, saltwater taffy or, like, some kind of chewable candy. They're labeled Vichy. It's because it's like a... It's like, I don't know, like um, Lord or something. Like people go there to take the waters. Oh, I thought that was just a pop artist. Oh. Sorry, I keep making the same but they're really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and she keeps looking at me like I'm serious. <laughs> In addition to being the artistic director or founder oh, or yeah, whatever please, he is, yeah. he's also the king of dad jokes at mm. Channel Fest. I try. Yeah. I try. He's got a lot of them. I try to be. Also, I feel so bad for throwing Gary off my lap. He was That's just, fine. Like, really clawing my knees there. That's and what he it does. Started hurting, so I, had to, I didn't mean to violently do that. I don't advocate violence. He just was trying to stand up. He hates cats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. G- Gary Q. Yeah. Uh, the stand meow, meow, meow. song. Yeah. Meow, 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 meow. Um. So let's talk about some of your other projects. Would you like to talk about La French Face? I would love to. Um. French Face is this French underground weird music project that I put on under the guise of a monthly night, also at Revolver, as you will come to know. I think Revolver is like this incubator for a lot of things that are happening in the scene. Um, so it's every first Wednesday. Um, 
I'm the house DJ, promoter, kind of everything girl, and then I have a guest every month, and every month the theme changes accordingly. Um, Last month it was like a kraut rock theme? Yeah, we did yeah. like a prog and kraut rock theme, mm-hmm. and Andy Reichel, who has a, a prog night at um, Hazelwood, was my guest, and we did an exclusively vinyl-only French prog night, which... Um, may sound kind of ready-made but i will assure you that it is not it's a highly curated affair i was gonna say um i think that's very much of a a challenge if you're gonna do vinyl only french prog that uh it's not an easy thing yeah i i'm not i'm not inspired by easy stuff as a matter of course um yeah so i've been doing this night at revolver since december um before that i I did you a big fan of christmas um no Oh. Not at all. Why'd you pick December I, to start doing I, it? I hate December, actually. You hate December? Yeah. Why do you hate December? It's depressing. It's a depressing month. Is it really? For me, it is. Why? Uh, I don't want to bum you guys out. It's just depressing. Um, well, actually, I mean, one of the sponsors of this radio program is uh, Xanax. So, just oh. keep going. Yeah. Well, maybe you guys can hook me up for December. Um, I, don't, I have no problem with December. Yeah. Uh, February, I think, is the worst month. Really? Yeah, February. Because you fucking have trogged through so much of winter. It's like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, it's just been winter for so long. And uh, it's just been gray and dreary for so long. December, everything's still kind of like not too bad. But, you I know. I personally hate the holidays. So I'm with you as well. I can't stand the summer. Yeah. I'm kind of a Christmas hater. I just, uh, I, just, I just hate, like, the expectations and... I don't know. I mean, I have some personal family stuff that went down in December, so that's why I Whoa. get pretty depressed because I have feelings and stuff. But um, on top of it, it's just I don't feel like I belong. And, you know, that was actually a huge inspiration for, like, my night because the whole name of the night that I do is called Am I Normal? And I really, um, you know, I work a lot with just, like, feeling like I don't really have a place or words for what I am and what how I want to express myself and actually that like feeling of non-belonging and depression is a really inspiring creative condition for me okay so quick question what is the worst three holidays Thanksgiving Christmas and New Year's or uh, St. Patrick's Day uh April Fool's Day and Cinco de Mayo. The first one. The yeah. First really? One. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hands down. They are not Hands real down. holidays, are they? I mean, technically they are, but they're not. Like nothing happens on those days except for. Oh like, bullshit! Party. Nothing happens. On those days. <laughs> yeah. Fucking annoying people are fucking annoying. You, you've never seen. Right, but there's no like. You've never seen a sorority girl with a it. fake mustache or sombrero throwing up in the street? Oh, I've seen more than my fair share. That's a, that's Having a real holiday. An event space. That's for a real three holiday. Years, yeah, I yeah. see all that kind of shit. So but that's not like a real holiday though. That's just like a really because it no, happens. It's a real people, holiday. A real well, holiday. Like, well, like Father's Day, right? Like it's a day that you celebrate fathers. That's not like a. You don't. There's no sales. For I fucking. Like, I, I hate. Don't know, I, hate I hate St. Patrick's Day. I hate uh, April Fool's Day, and I hate uh, Cinco de Mayo. April Fool's Day is not a real holiday, though. I mean, uh, I hate it. Really? Too. Are, do you have a Facebook account? And do you see <laughs> like your aunt posting that Obama raped a uh, baby? I'm not. <laughs> my family. Or like whatever. I know that there's a lot of like the, so the face. Happen. What? Yeah. That yes. No. Happen. My aunt did not rape okay. Obama. Oh, that's good. Yeah. No. That 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 was an April Fool's joke. That was a uh, St. Patrick's Day joke, actually. Yeah, that, that was got a terrible, delayed terrible until. Joke. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm not the one who did it. It was Facebook. Well, the thing is, I love Obama, so that just really bummed me out when I found out your aunt did that. Because uh, yeah. really then you found out I had no aunts, and yeah. in fact, I don't even say aunt; I say aunt. Because I'm from yeah. Boston. Um, I say aunt. Yeah. It's it's yeah. it's a regional thing. Yeah, there's there's no correct pronunciation. No, there is. It's aunt. Oh, there's it's oh aunt. My God. By the way, no, there's yeah. no. It's all regional. Aunt. Ants are the bugs that. You know, they crawl around on the sidewalk and whatnot. Aunts are the people you have who are related to your father. Or if I could contest with other words that we disagree on. Please do. Wicked means you're a terrible... Wicked means something terrible. It oh. It's cool. And I heard you use that adjective. Wicked doesn't real- mean cool. Wicked is means extremely. Oh, extreme. Okay. No, For instance, that's wicked cool. That's extremely cool. That's wicked <laughs> dumb. It's extremely dumb. We, we begin every right. meeting of Channel Fest with a reading of the word of the day. 
and defining it. Yeah. Um, words are really, really important to us. I like, bring this up because this man will say wicked a couple times when his true Bostonian does come out. Give him a couple Jamesons and some Sinfires, but you will hear that. Word. I don't drink Sinfire. I drink Jameson, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what's funny, listeners, is that he just... He has one of those like hard hat helmets with uh, the straws. He has two mm-hmm. bottles of Jameson. Yeah, and two straws. In That's his the mouth. way to do it. Because mm-hmm. I love sports. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. Sports. <laughs> ball games. Wicked ball game. <laughs> ball games. <laughs> Wicked piss a ball game. Did Revolver show the Super Bowl? Do you have TVs there? We have a TV at Revolver. Did we show the Super Bowl this year? We I did fucking the Super Bowl hope last part last year. We did a Super Bowl party. Did we do this one this year? year? I don't know if we had cable to do it this year. Mary, I fucking yes. hate. I hate sports. I hate everything Same. to do with professional did we really? sports. No, last year we did a thing, and yeah. we even had like a Skittles shot, which is no offense to anyone who's listening who likes this kind of thing, but it's really disgusting because it was Skittles, I wish I had uh, had Skittles mashed in into vodka. Yeah. What do you call that when you? No, I think we uh, you, a bad idea. Well, no, a bad idea. It's I call a bad it, idea. I call it a bad idea. Infusing. We infused, we infused vodka. vodka with Skittles. Is that, Jinx. And it was disgusting. Is that like like um, uh, cucumber water sort of? Kind of like that, but way worse. Yeah. It was, it was and it cost five bucks a shot. Yeah, I think oh that like the first Super Bowl we did at Revolver was such a bad idea that they didn't do it this last year. Marion is saying we did do it. When is the Super Bowl? I just, uh, I just said Super Bowl. Uh, it's usually on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, it's on a Sunday. Oh, on, on Sunday. the Lord's Day. It's it's mean. usually I'm usually well, out of actually, town. Well, actually, Saturday. It, is so the it's real usually Saturday. when I'm out of town. <laughs> so whenever Marianne goes out of town, it's a Super Bowl, and we don't do Skittle shots. No, you do you do do Skittle, we do shots, do Skittle shots, but I'm usually out of town. Gotcha. So so whose job is it to muddle the Skittles? Oh, I thought we infused them. See, I wasn't. They there. were infused. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was even worse than muddling. Yeah. See, I wasn't there for both years. I actually had a recording session the first year and the second year. Back to the original point. Why should people go to Channel Fest? Yeah, moving away from all of this silliness. Why should people go to Channel Fest? Um, people need to get educated. Yeah. 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 People People also could... Wait, wait, is that why you have giant uh, billboards that say we're going to school you? Exactly. I'm so glad you've seen those. Well, we get to the point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those cost a lot of money, and thank you to our sponsors for funding the billboards. Clear also. Channel and Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And also, no, I think uh, people should come the- to Channel because it's a chance to get to meet literally dozens of labels who are putting out amazing, interesting, curious art so for now, our community. Are you slightly worried that? Teenage metalheads are going to show up with a bag of demo tapes and go to every single label. I kind of hope they do. <laughs> I, think, I think that sounds great. Yeah. We kind of, we kind of only if they have skateboards. Yeah, <coughs> and actual cassettes. Yeah, like and real not tapes. Just skateboards. Yeah. We're talking about fishtail skateboards. Bart Simpson, early nineties, mm-hmm. late eighties style skateboards. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Cruise. Don't have a cow. Don't have a cow. Don't man. Have a cow. Man. 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 So, yeah, um, like I... Yeah, I, eat my shirts while you're at it. One of my yeah. fantasies is going back to my old stomping grounds in Bellevue and just, like, plying the, like, guy, the skater dudes who hang out outside of Ground Zero with whatever... Ground Zero might not be Do around Do we need to anymore. put a not safe for work tag on this? I just said plying. Oh, okay. Well, you said fantasy and skater boys, so... F- fantasy? I'm sure a lot of oh. Danny's listeners are... Getting hot and bothered right now. Over Skater over eighteen boy? years of well, age. Well, they might just be yeah. over trying a, to flap away. Eighteen years. You know what? No, it's funny. Fly. Is is every episode we probably say fuck, and I always for I, I actually don't know how to tell iTunes that it's explicit. I don't think that so, we've said fuck this whole entire time. I just uh, said, uh, well, I, said I fucking times. fuck you, really? shit. Yeah. I, I mean, right. I, I I said fantasy, and I just about got censored. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no. Anyways, I can't figure out how. Not censored, but censured. I can't tell. Sensual. Proscribed, sir. I do declare. No, I can't. T- I can't figure out how to tell iTunes that we swear, and so all our episodes go out with no explicit tag. So, like kids who are watching like Veggie Tales are also listening to this, and like I fucking oh my hope God, so. What's that word? So, hi- high schoolers, if you want to meet me, then let's meet outside of Ground Zero, and I will ply you with something. <laughs> Holy wow. yeah. shit! If you're over eighteen, 
Yeah. I oh my god. Got a, I, mean, I got. I, 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 I'm imagining some T-shirts. I got plied and uh, Fred Wildlife. Right <laughs> oh, that's yeah. actually not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, Why don't we get Bayland to sponsor this and then we're like we were we talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think you get a seven inch into a condom. Wait, what? Getting a, a seven inch into a condom. Oh, like okay. a seven inch record. Record, okay. Yeah. yeah. You can definitely get a seven inch dick into a condom. <laughs> You can, yeah, yeah. A lot of things are possible, but I think we should call it channel. <laughs> I'm glad that you know a lot of things are possible when it comes to seven inch records and condoms. My, my job is to do business development, so I know a lot of things are possible. See, but I've only yeah. tried wrapping cock rings around seven inch records. I've tried putting a condom on it. I know that works. Have you ever broken the seventy eight? I have. Yes, it's yeah. so fucking fun. It's really satisfying. It's really sad. Yeah. So okay, this. But it makes a great sound. I don't think it's sad because okay, the only seventy okay, so the only seventy eights I've ever broke are ones that are scratched to fuck that like no one can ever play. And actually, uh, at the record store I work at, uh, about a week ago, someone had dropped off some a bunch of records. We went through them, and we had all of these records that like they didn't want to take with them, including a bunch of seventy eights. And then we had a show at the store, and there was some drinking involved. And then we started breaking the 78s, and it's so fun because you just have to tap it and it fucking shatters. And so we were just breaking them and breaking them and breaking them and drinking beers. And uh, and then people were walking in the store and they're like, holy shit, this place is covered with broken shellac <laughs> and a bunch of people drinking. Mm. Sounds pretty punk rock if you ask me. That's what they said. And then they You know what I say? Welcome to Seattle. That's what yeah. I say. Yeah. Speaking of which, are these Gary's drugs right here? Uh, they're cat drugs, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah, not, they're not the fun Boring. Drugs. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of welcome to Seattle, I mean, why should people come to Channel Fest? Because, like... <laughs> Original question. You know, if you're going to know about what Seattle music is, uh, most of the time, you will have a really hard time finding out because you'll just get a bunch of shellac records handed to you on a platter. <laughs> uh, case in point, and uh, we're, we're going to give you shellac records in a tote bag. Back to the after hours, late night, adults only pay aspect. What are all the bands playing again? So we have uh, SSDD. Steal shit, do drugs. You can swear on AM radio. Steal shit and do drugs. You know why you can swear on AM radio? Because the FCC thinks that no one listens to AM radio. So you can swear as much as you want. Fuck, fuck awesome. idiots. Yeah, yeah, fucking idiots. Uh, Rolodex, Gatheus. Uh, the headliner I can't officially announce, but we're also in cahoots with possibly adding two more. Kind of trying to figure that the out. The headliner is pretty big, though. It's pretty, like, there's a reason why it's hush-hush. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Can, can we just say this if it's going to go out in a week? Um, oh, yeah, I, no, I, I was actually, I, I'm going out of town, and so this is actually going to go out tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Can we give some hints? Can we drop some hints? Uh... Uh, all, the the all, owls are not what they seem. They are not yeah. what they seem. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. All say. Mic drop. So we're going to need to pay some bills. We're going to uh, go to commercial break. We'll be right back. Hey. Hey, Susie. What's up? Oh, Peter Pan. I'm not Peter Pan. I'm done. Um, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Why are you asking? Oh, you don't sound fine. Anyway, have you started the assignment? It's due in a few hours. No, not yet. Are you mad? When are you going to do it? Hakuna Matata. What? Uh, I'm serious. When are you going to do it? How are you going to finish it? It's okay. I'll just rub my magic lamp and the genie will do it for me. Ooh, what? I want one of those magic lamps. Where do I get it from? Okay, just visit Disney. That's where the magic happens. And we're back. Um, so, it would uh, pain me not to bring up the fact that uh, Ground Zero may or may not close. Uh, do you want to speak to that? You're breaking my heart over here. You're That's giving, my you're, job. You're giving me news that you're asking me to talk about? That's not fair. I'm giving you news that I'm asking you to talk about. Um... Yeah, that's Ground Zero Teen Center uh, yeah. it is a place that has fantastic shows. A uh, co-worker of mine, Justin, uh, not only helps, I mean, he helps out there, he gives music lessons there. Uh, it's a pretty fantastic place. So yeah. you, you have it on good uh, good information that they're closing down. 
There, it seems like it's a possibility. Oh, well, I mean, everything's a possibility in Bellevue, but mm. thankfully not. Isn't that the fucking slogan? <laughs> that when you like, drive into Bellevue, it's, everything's a possibility. And there, there's like this real, there's this, like really white couple that's like winking. Like everything's a possibility in Bellevue. Yeah, it's like a depre- like depression era banner. Um, yeah, I mean, Ground Zeroes are really... It's like one of the only good places in Bellevue. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to say because I spent a lot of my formative years in Bellevue, so you'd think there'd be other good places, but outside of the Kmart... Don't they have a Paxson? What? <laughs> so don't they have a Paxson? I mean, oh, great place to spend some time. Yeah. Well, there there is a 7-Eleven parking lot that I spent a lot of time in when I was in junior high, but... Um, That's where I got my first uh, bag of opium. Paxson? Whoa. No, the 7-Eleven parking lot. Oh, that's, real. that's not true. I'm lying. Oh. <clears throat> Continue. I was going to say, 7 Eleven parking lot in Turkey? Yeah, do people buy bags of opium? In Bellevue? In 7 Eleven parking lot? Anywhere? <laughs> you, you only buy boxes of opium? <laughs> no, I buy handfuls. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Bushels. Like the, the, the heavy handshake. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like kind of like you're holding a bunch of mashed potatoes, but it's opium. Opium like, poppies, you have to, it's very DIY, you have to split them open and like boil them yourself. You know, actually, we, we, we don't talk are, about that on the air though. Chris. Yeah, that, no, that's, yeah. That's, it'd that's be illegal for me to talk about all of the spots around Seattle where there are poppies growing widely that you can harvest for. <laughs> this this is tea. information we read about in books. We don't know any of this firsthand. Yeah. We're making this all up. Yeah. Uh, if you want more books like this, go to Seattle Public Library <laughs> uh, at seattlepubliclibrary.org or it, the Pike Place. I think it's the 700 section in the Dewey Decimal System. But um, yeah, so I, I remember seeing like Chikong and Blood Brothers and all sorts of fucking oh, awesome Brothers. bands when I was in high school at Ground Zero. And nice. uh, they there's actually like a record label attached to them called like, um, it's like Magnetic Sea Bass or something like that. And actually, if I can use one opportunity to shout out on the... On the uh, I guess so. Magnetic Sea uh, Bass? I guess so. Magnetic Sea Bass. Will you say, uh, I guess so? Again. Please, someone has that. I was just trying, I was yeah, trying to get that. Okay, hold on a second. We're okay. going to have to hold that off. Okay, so I'm going to go through some of the labels that will be at Channel Fest. I want you to, you know, I know it's hard to pick a favorite child, but if you could, you know, in the moment, say a great record that maybe people should think about buying. Just shout it out. So if I was going to buy... If I was going to buy a late, uh, sorry, a record from Light in the Attic, what should I buy? The LHI Year Singles and Nudes and Backsides by Lee Hazelwood. That's a good one, but I would do Country Funk number two, actually. Ooh, actually, that is a better one. That's oh, sorry, Lee Hazelwood. That's one of their best Don't record be releases. tossing around in your yeah, grave right easily. now. That is a great one. I, I would go for the Wapasu reissue, personally. Mm. Uh, okay, I'm walking by the table with Suicide Squeeze. Ooh, you know what? My favorite suicide. Squeeze, 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 sque
from Merso, and I believe it's oh yeah, Merso. I, I believe it's I believe it's self title. I might be completely wrong. S slash T. Yes. Medical records. Oof. Oh, there's too many. Yeah, there's, there's too many. Guy name one. So Guy name one. Gina X. Uh, Geneva Good. Jacuzzi. Yep, second that. Geneva Jacuzzi. Gay Cat Park. I have to admit, I love the Alexander Robotnik reissues. Ooh, yes, that actually. It's weird when you say I have to admit for something that's like fine. Like, yeah. I mean, some people say like, oh, I have to admit that I really like Kevin Costner. And that's like, wow, that's weird that you have to admit that. Yeah. You say I have to admit you like something that's like really great. It's, a reissue, yeah, it, it, it's like saying I have to admit I like two out of ten Nicolas yeah. Cage movies. <laughs> I mean, I have to admit that when I get a bagel, I put cream cheese on it. Sorry! Okay, Freak Out Records. What am I buying? Well, like um, Freak uh, Out, you're acetone. buying uh, either Acetone or the New Axise uh, cassette, the or, Alien soundtrack. Will that be cassette. out by the time you do this? It Fair? will. So actually cool. on the night before yeah. Channel Festival. Oh, so they, okay, on yeah, July 15th, I would yeah, I would love I to promote. Plug? Oh, I would love to plug this because you have all the info cuz yeah. I'm so excited about this. This will be I'm sorry that I'm more excited about this than Channel Fest. Sorry. That's okay. This wow. this Interview radio over. Wow. This radio wow. show is about How do I drop fucking the mic truth. If this I'm not radio show is about mic. fucking truth. Can we just drop this it's on the ground? So, uh, uh, Channel Fest is on July 16, the day before Channel Fest on July 15, New Axis is doing a record release, a, a cassette nope. release, rather. Cassette release. Well, record, I mean, LP. You cassette. Know, you know what I mean? I'm using colloquial I'm sorry. Terms here. Double cassette I'm release. sorry. It's an analog cassette tape release. Double cassette. Uh, double cassette. In fact, it's their uh, score to the Alien film uh, and they're doing a, a show for that at Fred Wildlife Refuge the day before Channel Fest. Uh, I think uh, I can't remember how much it is to get in regular, but if you do, a, it's pretty cheap. I think it's like it's, it's six or eight well, bucks no, no, or no, something. No, no. So, so it's cheap to get in, but then if you want to get in with a T-shirt and a tape, there is some bonus yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out the Freak Out re- website or whatnot. You'll find Which, all that. I mean, there. honestly, so I saw the uh, Alien score at the Northwest Film Forward. Amazing, mind blowing. It was, it was stuff. so good, and yeah. I would love to be able to fill a room with a bunch of speakers so it's really loud and play Alien and play that. Well, and so what we're going to be doing? Yeah. We're going to be playing Alien, the film uh, excerpts oh. of it, and they're going to do some of that live, oh, and then yeah. some non soundtrack stuff as well. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was just a mishmash. Such an amazing score It's so great. All right, Debacle Records. Ooh. Well, that's hard because there's Motor, which is an imprint of Debacle. So, are you talking Debacle, Debacle, or all well, of them? Motor is actually debacle. the next on my list. Well, so. let's just combine both then. No, 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 no. Let's keep them separate. If you can, mm. keep them separated. If you can't, we can just go to Motor. Well, I just want to say, like, I love um, Jason's side project called Airport. That Motor's been putting out some of his 12 inches. And then there was the Organ Mood remix. Jason from like, Night Boss, you're speaking and of. Mood and Organ. he's also a part of um, The Rollers. Well, no, 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 no. I no? can't believe I'm spacing out right now. Uh, what's the band that Garrett Moore drums in? Which one? That's Midday true. Vale, <laughs> Midday Space vale. Museum. Yeah, Jason. Wait, Jason is in, is Midday, in Midday Vale, vale too? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Midday Vale seems to in, be the, the, like, the, the Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Of, of our debacle. You know, I've seen the Dave Vale play a bunch of times. Jason is in that band. If, yeah, if, if, I, I'm sorry. Full disclosure, folks. I get really stoned before I see the Dave Vale, and so I can't remember everyone who's in the band. Yeah, he's been in the band for a few years now. If and you're all good seven of degrees away from Midday Vale, thus past the Kevin Bacon threshold, please contact Accents on Purpose at uh, <laughs> podcastgmail.com. Uh, motor, motor, motor. Wait, records. no one's gonna comment on debacle. Didn't we just? We just did. Okay. Yeah. Motor. Motor. Um, I'm a Mood Organ fan. I love me some Mood Organ. You already heard me. I'm an airport fan. Uh, FFU, Filthy Fingers United. Ooh, that's uh, Dax's label. Oh, fucking Dax. You know what? Guess what? You know what? I want to talk some shit. Dax was booked on this radio program, forgot to show up, and it pissed me the fuck off. But anyways, Dax is great. I love him. His label's awesome. Um, so recently, actually, they put out a uh, compilation with a bunch of different DJs and like local mm-hmm. producers. I think there's like 25 on there. 
But yeah, I mean, like Filthy Fingers United, be great if you're into some of like the bedroom producer. I don't want to insult him by saying lo-fi beat maker hip hop, but it kind of like gets categorized in that realm. It's some good stuff. It makes me think of like the early days of like Flying Lotus almost. Yeah, you know, I can and we're like Daedalus and Teebs, something from like uh, yeah. Hyperdub, like stuff around like 2008, 2009, like all the releases Hyperdub was putting out. Some of those compilations. Good stuff. Uh, Broken Press Records. There's some newer artists whose names are, I mean, it's like artists who have re- re-labeled themselves, mm. essentially. Um, some really interesting kind of like quasi-Italo disco slash this like experimental drony stuff. Mm. But I, I'm, I'm blanking on the names. I am too. <clears throat> so now I have <clears throat> a few very important questions for you. Are we idiots? Well, that's not important. Should we do? Should we? Do I mean, I mean, I mean, I said important, not obvious. Uh, <laughs> Boom. You burnt. Whoa! I guess Whoa. we're all going home now. I mean, I'm burnt. Anyway. Okay, so uh, let's say let's say Universal Studios buys the rights to Channel Fest. Who's playing each of you in the movie? That is an important question. Oh, that's a hard one. Ooh. And you can mm. say other people. <laughs> you don't have to say you. Whatever the guy who plays Jon Snow on Game of Thrones, that would be Chris. Ooh, that's <laughs> that's pretty... I like that. That's pretty good. Thank I like you. that. I guess I'll take it as a compliment. You know, no, it is. That's what, Marianne to... would be played by Taylor Swift. No. Yeah, but I think with, more but of with, a like, You know how they did... Thank no, you. no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's 2016. We need to, like, <laughs> scale it downwards. You know how they did that thing in Lord of the Rings where they... Wait, like, wait, hold on, hold on. Really let's, let's, name let's name B. Let's name B. Let's name B. I'm terrible I'm, I'm gonna be nice. Wait, John Hodgman. Who? John Hodgman? Who? I'm, I'm going to be nice and say Joaquin Phoenix. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, what, what is your non-nice version? I don't say non-nice things. Eh. I'll choose, I'll choose. I'll take Joaquin Phoenix, though. Yeah. Not on the I air. Think you should probably button up my yeah. shirt more and... Pretend to rap. <laughs> oh, he's done with that era. Who would uh, yeah, Laura I said pretend. and Jordan be? What do you think about that? Well, Laura could be Penelope Cruz. You know, I was thinking the same thing, actually. Yeah. Were you? Or the fiery Mexican woman from that show. The show with... The, uh, with the people. Is that Modern Family? The yes! Show. That oh, one, yeah. Sophia Vergara. <laughs> oh man! Bingo. Oh yes, yeah. no, Bingo. I like that guy. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. really? What's the name? I of guess I think that. Wait, he's he's a writer. Right? That's a good he's, thing, right? He's a writer. He does. He's like uh, he does This American Life. He did uh, yeah. the Daily Show. He was also part of Flight of the Concord. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's, he's all like the, the, the greeting place. card company like president. I really yeah. liked him on Bored to Death. Yeah, yeah. He's hilarious. What's the name of the woman from Office Space? Not Office Space, but um, The Office. Uh, Angela? Angela, what's the Oh, name? you're Angela? not an Angela. No, no you don't like Angela. Can I, can I just play, can I role play into an Angela? I guess. Hello. It's my, it's my <laughs> other fantasy. Anyway, that was a weird, yeah, it's a weird fantasy that's coming out. Like, <laughs> I want to be that woman at the office. It's all man. Well, if we have to okay. switch actors, I mean, I don't look like this actor, but I think he would be hilarious yeah. to play me as Aziz Ansari. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. So very, yeah. That would work. I could see yeah. that. Yeah. 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 We could, we could but more like Tom that. Haverford as Aziz Ansari as Tom Haverford but where would on you Parks go? and Rec. Where would you I don't go? know either of those characters. Parks I, and Recreation. Okay. I a television show. show. Yeah. It's a television show. I, I know of it. It's rather popular. I, I, so I've heard. I just haven't really seen it. Aziz Ansari is on it. Yeah. Where would you be immigrating from, though? You know what? Well, there's, no there's, there's, there's no backstory. backstory. There's no immigration. Like, there's no time for a backstory. Yeah. It, Can't it's, it's, a like ni- it's, it's a 90 minute like, movie about yeah. channel fans. Can't you, you just be like, like, you know, just yeah. born in the States and so happen to possibly have like some other form of heritage that we don't know about? It's just ambiguous. I, I think okay, that's so, kind of the yeah. motto of a yeah. channel is we have no backstory. We are, yeah. We're like the cast of Friends. Like, we just all are in the same Don't bring up fucking Friends on my fucking radio. Okay, we're like the cast of Lost. Don't bring up Lost. So okay, Pretty where nice. okay? One last question: Where do you folks get your coffee? Where's the best place to get coffee in Seattle? That's a really political question. <sighs> I make it myself because I'm really broke. Uh, you know, many beans. guests have said that. Many guests have said that. Yeah. Well, actually, I get my beans for free from friends who work at Cafe Vita. So if, Thievery! I, if I didn't make it myself Nepotism. in my house, I would probably go to Analog Coffee because they have perfect. Oh, that's 
my favorite. Analog coffee. Great I also go to analog, but I don't like that how you said analog. Analog. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I wish you had said yeah. analog. Talk about after hours coffee. Analog. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've had a couple beers in me, and the truth <laughs> yeah. comes out. After hours. Um, I make mine at home, and I get it at the co-op. Um, and when I go out for coffee, which is infrequent because I'm cheap as fuck. Yawn. Continue. Oh, that is all. Okay. <laughs> um, any last words? Any last words? Um, yes, that's what I said. Thank you for repeating it. <laughs> you're welcome. I think repetition is the... Anyway. Um, Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Porch light. Oh, a great place. Yeah. They make really... Yeah, they're good pickle. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, uh, you know, I am heading to, so I'm heading to Cleveland on Wednesday. Uh, one of my favorite things is that if you look at, um, or one of my favorite things about going to Cleveland is if you look at where the airport is in my mom's house, right in between is a Dunkin' Donuts. So always the first and last thing I do in Cleveland is go to Dunkin' Donuts. Um, you know, what's funny was, uh, this is another story for another time. Uh, we're going to uh, end this episode of Excellence Purpose. Uh, if you want to get Joseph out of jail, just uh, do hashtag I stand with Joseph. Uh, my name is Danny. This has been another episode of Accents on Purpose. Keep one finger on the pause button, one foot in the grave, and fuck you for listening. Channel Fest as grassroots as possible and more, it is much DIY as it could be. Uh, depending on the amount of offensiveness, I would probably let you do that. Oh, I have a text message. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> grassroots, God grew it. Why can't I grassroots? I don't know. What would you do, V? I would probably tell a motherfucker to get the fuck out of here. That's exactly what I would do. Yeah. That's not as funny as I thought it would be. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, same here. And that pretty much sums up this podcast and Seattle. Boom!